Welcome to the NX for Manufacturing Tech Tips. Today's tech tip is on creating inspection ready CMM programs right in NX with the NX CMM inspection application. The demonstration will last approximately 20 minutes, then we'll stay on the line and open up a chat window for Q&A. With that, I'd like to turn the session over to Steve Sigliano. Welcome, Steve. Thank you very much, Derek. Um, <clears throat> so what we're going to be talking about today is NX CMM inspection programming. So to, uh, to start with just a little bit of background about uh, NX CMM inspection programming, it is of course embedded fully inside of NX and uh, has been developed uh, on top of uh, NX CAM. For, so for those of you that are familiar with, uh, uh, with NX CAM, the user interface and workflow will seem uh, very familiar. We use a lot of the components of NX CAM. In particular, we use the uh, machine simulation engine for simulating the motion and, and uh, collision detection of the CMM with the part. We also use uh, post-processing technology based on NX CAM so that uh, it's possible to develop uh, post-processors to output your CMM programs uh, in the native language of your CMM. Out of the box, we, uh, we supply post-processors that uh, generate programs for CMMs that understand the, the DEMIS programming language. Uh, we have been certified by the National Institute of Technology to be conformant with uh, the DEMIS uh, 5.2 standard, and we are one of the few companies which uh, have achieved that level of certification. Uh, and what that means is that you have a very high degree of confidence in the quality and the accuracy of the of the programs that uh, that we generate. Um, the other uh, two other major topics that to be considered is that we also use the uh, PMI information in the model to automatically generate the uh, part programs, and this is the part that I'll be uh, showing you today. Um, we will go we go through the PMI and automatically convert the PMI into features, tolerances, and inspection paths, so that you can end up with a uh, inspection ready program and this allows us to do a high degree of automation uh, in, in some cases we can reduce the time to generate a CMM inspection program by as much as 80 percent. Um, the other aspect is is that we are fully integrated with Team Center which means that you can use Team Center to store all of your information not only the the model that uh, that you're inspecting but also all of the uh, the machines the tooling the uh, the probes that you're going to use and and then when you're done you can uh, store your inspection program back into team center and of course once it's in team center you can take advantage of all the team center capabilities such as uh, uh, change management and uh, impact uh, analysis so that if uh, a part changes you can see all of the inspection programs that are that are impacted by that um, so with that overview i'll go in and, and uh, begin the demonstration so in this case here you can see we have a a, a part uh, with uh, various uh, PMI on it, and you can see we have a number of uh, feature control frames which identify the position tolerances, perpendicularity, flatness, and other characteristics on the part. Uh, to start the, the process of creating a CMM inspection program, you do File New, and uh, when you do File New, it brings up a list of uh, templates that you can use to create your inspection program. The templates are very important for helping you to automate the process because you can use the template to uh, create a uh, complete uh, virtual work cell, including this a model of the CMM, uh, tool racks, uh, fixturing, and uh, a number of predefined inspection operations. And they can be all contained within that template. So uh, this enables you to, uh, to rapidly get started with the, uh, with the creation of an inspection program. Uh, for this demonstration today, I've created a, a template that contains uh, the model of a uh, Sheffield CMM along with the tool rack and the probes loaded, loaded in there. So with that, so you should be able to see now the, uh, the, uh, the Sheffield machine along with the, the tool rack with uh, three probes and the part located in the machine. Uh, for purposes of uh, inspecting this part, we need we know that we need to inspect not only the top and the bottom. So it's very easy to uh, manipulate the part uh, using the uh, the assembly or component move function inside of NX. So in this case, we're going to turn it on its side by 90 degrees so that we have access to both the top and the bottom. So we have the part positioned on the uh, on the machine. Now I'll show you that we have a number of predefined operations defined in the template. 
Uh, in particular, you can see we've defined a, a standard way of locating the part in the alignment folder here. Uh, what we have is we've defined a single point where we're going to locate the probe uh, to locate the part and a, and a path to, ins to inspect that. Um, because this was loaded in a, in a template, we just have to update the uh, definition of the uh, geometry of our point uh, by specifying the, the point where we want the probe to move. So in this case here, we're going to move the probe uh, manually to the, to the center of this, of this circle. And we can just select the circle and then uh, define the projection faces here. So we have our, our point defined, and uh, we just have to generate uh, these operations. And they now have automatically updated to, uh, to the actual part geometry and the part location that we're, that we're going to use. Um, now for the, uh, the next step is that we're just going to define the, uh, the safe plane uh, that we're going to use to, in, to uh, inspect the part. The safe plane is a location where the probe will move uh, without running into the part. So we'll use the uh, safe plane dialog here. And what we'll do in this case is that we're going to define the safe plane uh, about 50 millimeters um, to the left of the part. Use the plane dialog here. So we've now defined the, uh, the safe plane. We have our uh, alignment operation. And this is where we now can take advantage of all the PMI that's in this part. We have a function which is called link PMI. And what link PMI will do is it will go through and read all the PMI in the part and uh, create the necessary inspection features and tolerances and inspection paths. So. This will take about uh, approximately 30 seconds to, uh, to read through this and create all the operations necessary. So the first thing you'll see is that we have a uh, report on the status of the uh, P link PMI operation. And it will tell you all the PMI uh, elements that have been successfully uh, understood and linked. Uh, now, this is an associative link so that if any aspect of the PMI or the geometry that it points to updates, then the inspection program will, can automatically update as well to take that into account. Uh, but you can see in this case that all of our uh, PMI that was in the part uh, linked successfully. The other thing I want to point out is that uh, we actually use the PMI index number to define the tolerances that are in the program. So in this case here, you can see, for example, uh, feature control frame 28. And what that corresponds to is to the uh, PMI index number. So this shows you the correlation between the PMI that's uh, defined in the model and the, the tolerances that are inside the program. So you can see we have uh, about uh, 20 different uh, features that were created uh, automatically by this process. We have our inspection paths, uh, inspection paths created as well as all of the tolerances necessary. So at this point, uh, we'll just update everything to make sure that we're all in sync with the geometry. And we can then uh, simulate the program to make sure that the, uh, the program will uh, operate correctly. So we'll bring up the uh, simulation dialog. And we'll go in and we'll turn collision detection on and specify the collision pairs. So once again, this is the same dialog that's uh, used in NXCAM. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to check to make sure that th none of the tools will run into the part. Uh, of course, you can uh, define multiple collision pairs here. So you can have, uh, if you have fixtures in the part, uh, you can also check for collisions against the fixtures. So we'll now begin the uh, machine simulation. And you'll note that we actually simulate the, uh, the tool change operations in the tool rack and going through all of the inspection paths. So in this case, uh, our program uh, was generated and uh, successfully without any collisions. So now we're ready to actually create the inspection program itself. And at this, at this point, we now use uh, post-processing to convert all the generic operations into something which is specific for a particular machine. As I said, we supply two post-processors out of the box, um, one for the DEMAS 3.0 standard, which works with our CMM inspection execution software. 
Um, the other is uh, Demus 5.2, and this is, as I said, our certified uh, Demus programming language uh, certified by NIST. Um, it's also possible to generate um, uh, post processors for other CMM uh, brands. And you can see here in my list, I actually have three additional post processors available. Uh, one for a Wenzel machine, one for a Renishaw equator, and then one for that uh, uses the MODIS programming language. Um, so it's uh, it's very easy to to create these post processors and uh, modify them to for your own particular CMM. So in this case, we've now have uh, run the post processor, and you can see it took about uh, one second or so to uh, to create this program. Uh, this is a pretty small part. Uh, it's about uh, two megabytes in size and has about 20 features. So that just to give you some idea of uh, the kind of performance that you would expect. Uh, but as you can see, we've got all of our point measurements, and then at the end we have our uh, output uh, statements for analyzing the tolerances. So in the space of about uh, five or six minutes, we were able to actually go through the entire process of uh, starting with the part uh, and generating an inspection program. Uh, now you might ask yourself, well, you know, what if I don't have PMI on the part? And uh, so what we have done is that we have uh, developed a number of... Uh, uh, add-in programs to automate some commonly used tasks. And what I want to do now is uh, show you two of them that we've developed, one for creating um, inspection paths for parts that have a lot of holes, and then also one to uh, automatically generate or to help you uh, measure the thickness of, uh, thickness of parts. So as you can see, we have uh, this, uh, hub this hub part here. Uh, and once again, we'll go through the same process. Um, I'm going to use the same uh, the same template that I had, the, the template that we looked at before was in millimeters, and this part's actually in inches. But we do allow these sort of mixed mode um, uh, sem assemblies and templates. So we'll just go ahead and use this, uh, this template that we have with this, with this inch part. Uh, once again, we're just going to put the part on the machine. So we'll just grab it and uh, drag it over and orient it on the machine. Uh, so that we can inspect the features that we want. Okay. Now, of course, you can uh, you can position the part on the machine and, um, at the beginning, but uh, you're not restricted to uh, to that location. You can uh, uh, you can actually move the part around any time and uh, regenerate the program. So you can see, of course, that we have our uh, our operations that we had in the in the part before, and I won't go through that part. Uh, again, but what I will do is show you uh, some of these add-ons. So the first thing is uh, we have a, an add-on for uh, creating uh, lots of holes. Uh, it has a number of different options. Uh, for example, you can uh, pick all the holes that are adjacent to the face that you pick. So what I did in this uh, right now is I picked this planar face, and it went through the part and found all of the holes that uh, were adjacent to that face. Um, the option that I'm going to use now is what's called all matching. And what it will do is you pick one hole, and it will then go through the part and find every hole that uh, matches that size, uh, the, that hole in diameter and length. And you have uh, a number of additional options here. You can uh, set the approach direction. I'm going to change it so that it uh, enters from the top. You can name the holes uh, in a number of uh, ways according to your company standards, and we're just going to name these so they're whole one, two, three, four. Uh, you can also specify a default size tolerance and uh, whether you want to create the path, what tool you want, and whether you want to activate collision uh, avoidance. So at this point, we'll just go ahead and, uh, and uh, create these holes. So there's about 30 holes, and this will take uh, roughly um, about 30, 30 or 40 seconds to actually create these holes. So put uh, all of the operations for these holes all in a folder, and it has the feature definition as well as all of the inspection paths and all the tolerances uh, necessary to, ins to inspect all of these features. So it, as I said, it took roughly 30 seconds to create uh, all these features and paths, so it was about one second per feature for this, for this particular part. Uh, the other thing is we now want to, I want to show you um, measuring the thickness of this uh, of this lip here. So what this uh, tool will do is allow you to pick the two sides uh, that you want to measure the thickness. 
and you can then specify the number of points that you want to use to uh, to inspect the to inspect that thickness. So in this case here, I'm going to use 30 points to um, to inspect inspect that thickness. And once again, you have control over how you name these uh, features and tolerances. Uh, specify the uh, the allowed thickness, and uh, of course, you can also create the paths and activate uh, collision avoidance. In this case, I will activate the collision avoidance just to show how it works. And so we'll, once again, we'll specify a safe plane and we'll locate that safe plane uh, 50 millimeters above the part. And we'll go ahead and let that go. This will take just a little bit longer because of the, uh, the collision avoidance. So this is a, a key cap uh, capability of uh, NXCMM inspection programming is that it has a, uh, um, a fully qualified um, NX Open API so that uh, you as a customer can actually uh, create your own add-ins if you want to, to help automate your uh, business processes. And what we're doing here is just showing how some of the, the uh, NX Open APIs can be used. So you have complete access to all of the ability to, to uh, create features, um, tolerances, inspection paths, and uh, as well as the, uh, the, the NX uh, user interface elements. So you can, as you can see, we can create um, um, very complex uh, user interface uh, that looks um, and matches the uh, NX design philosophy. And we're just about done. Okay, so. What we did in this case is that we, we created 30-point uh, uh, features along with the inspection paths and all the tolerances necessary to, uh, to check the, the thickness of this, of this part. So with that, then we can, uh, of course, we can run the simulation again. And to verify that uh, we don't have any collisions. Measure the holes in the thickness, and we're done. And we can now uh, do our post-processing again. And we now have all of our program necessary to inspect all those holes and inspect that thickness. So what have we seen? So we've seen that uh, if you have uh, parts with PMI, we can use the PMI to uh, very quickly create uh, inspection programs. And of course, the advantage of using PMI and, and with NXCMM inspection programming is that uh, you can be sure that you have actually inspected all the characteristics and that, you, that they're defined and checked um, in, from the inside your inspection program. Uh, but also, even if you don't have um, uh, if you don't have PMI, you can actually uh, use some of our uh, little add-in tools to quickly and automate uh, very common <clears throat> common activities and tasks, you know, in particular parts with holes, uh, lot, lots of holes, or measuring um, thickness. Um, so with that, uh, that completes our demonstration today. And Derek, uh, back to you. Thank you very much, Steve. That was fantastic. I think we all learned a lot. Uh, we'll see you next time on NXCAM 20-Minute Tech Tips.